In this video, we're going to create this bouncing ball in Flipper Clip, and we're going to animate it using traditional frame by frame animation. So, in Flipper Clip, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project here, and I'm going to call it Bouncing Ball. So, I'm just going to write it in here, and I usually want to make my canvas a little bit darker on the gray side. I don't want my canvas very white. I want to make it a little bit darker that way actually if i have to make if i have to actually create you know some color in there or if i want to put highlights or black and white i could just have it in there so i'm just going to go ahead and make it that way and i'm adding a, a, other parameters to it you can see i'm adding a little bit of guides here and i'm making the opacity a little bit up so i can be able to see them because i'm going to need those to guide me uh, in order for me to keep my ball in lines and that way it will be actually easier to control so i added a few guides here and you can look at my canvas it's ready for action uh, this is a flipper clip interface here and what i'm gonna go ahead and do first of all i'm gonna bring out the rulers and i'm gonna choose the circle and I always say this, that when you're creating your work for your animations, your graphics, you just want everything to be very big when drawing. So you want things to be really huge. So that way when you scale them down when you're animating, uh, to put them on the frames, they look a lot better. So it's always advisable to draw big, big, big. And when you're working on polishing up the final animation, you could scale them down a little bit. And they won't look as much pixelated so it's good to draw big and then animate a little bit on the size that you're going for so you can see here i'm trying to shoot for that one box uh of the uh, uh that one box of the guide and i think i got exactly where i wanted to be here um let me go ahead and draw so with this one i start with the anchor right away there's no sketching or anything because we're just going to draw an old school ball and um, to make it interesting I'm gonna add these creases here oops I'm gonna add a few creases on this side here and another one this way so it's gonna look a little bit like a tennis ball but I'll add this little one in the middle here uh, for a little section just for a change of color when I start dropping in the color just like the ball I used to draw when I was in primary three <laughs> when I was a five-year, six-year-old boy. This is the kind of ball I used to draw, and it's exactly what I'm going to use for this exercise. Let's go ahead and drop in some colors. Let me look at uh, blue here. Just going to drop in any random colors. This does not matter at this point. I'm just trying to make it a little bit more interesting, but it doesn't matter whatsoever if you're going to be doing this. Uh, the middle here, let me actually give it a little bit of a yellowish kind of bright, whatever, just to make it interesting. So this is our ball. We've drawn the graphic, first of all. And the easy thing about this project is that there's not going to be a lot of drawing. We just draw one ball and it's what we're going to keep duplicating and moving on different frames. And that's it. So I'm adding a frame here. To begin with because i wanted to not be in the frame at the start so i added an empty frame to begin with and now i'm duplicating the frame that i have and i'm going to use the selection tool and i'll start moving my ball where i want it to go down this way so i'm planning to use about three frames for the drop just three frames for the ball to go all the way from out uh, to down so when you add the empty frame that I put at the beginning of everything It's gonna be about four frames. They're enough uh, for this ball to drop all the way uh, to the ground And you can see now I have two frames if I can leave onion skinning on there, so I just duplicated another one here And those are my four frames and in the four frames the ball is actually gonna be all the way on the ground where I want it to be uh, and this is exactly where I want it to be. So now if I play what I have so far, you can see that the ball is already dropping. Uh, but it's not bouncing or stretching or anything like that. It's just going to bounce. 
it's just going to fall. I'll add all those special effects where it actually stretches and uh, squishes in a bit. But for now, I'm just going to duplicate this. And now we're going to start going back up. So the way I want it to fall is I want it to go down, go back up a little bit, go down, and then roll off, uh, roll away from the point at which it's dropping. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring it back. So it landed and in this one it's going to try to go back up so this is frame number five and i just added another frame it's all duplicating guys copy and duplicate so the first fall is going to be faster because it's the first uh, fall and it has a little bit of velocity but going back up is going to be a little bit slower. That's why I have so far three frames that contribute to the ball going up. But the ball falling down was just three frames. And they're going to be a little bit closer. So it goes slower. The more you have the graphics apart, is the faster the ball is going to be either going up or going down. And now that it's going to go up slower, I want when it's going down to go back, pick up a little bit of velocity. So it's going to go to to. Um, yeah, it falls fast, goes back up like you can feel the energy going back up and then it falls back down again. The power of uh, gravity is at work here, too. I'm going to make this one touch where the first one fell, and you can see that. So it falls. It falls and then goes back up and then goes back down. It's it's kind of like, you know, you've seen those people who play ping pong or who play table tennis when they hold the ball and they hit it on the table and keep tapping on it like it's a little bit of a dribble. But I'm going to make it dribble. It's already dribbling once, so I'm going to make it, no, two times. I'm going to make it dribble three times. So now I'm working on the uh, third dribble. It's going to go up, and this one is going to be even slower. So you can see, and shorter, so it's going to be only two frames, like that. And, uh, yeah, you hear me making monkey sounds. Don't be afraid to make those. They actually help out. <laughs> it's a good thing when you act out your own animations. It, it actually helps. Uh, to keep your animation in check and to know exactly how naturally things act. Sometimes when you just think about them without saying them out loud, it doesn't help. You don't get the gist of it. So now what's going to happen is that we're going to make now the ball roll off to the side, but while it's rolling off to the side, so I want it to bounce a little bit. I don't want it to just bounce and then roll off like, uh, you know, what is it called? like um a bowling ball i wanted to dribble a little bit and then when it's rolling off i wanted to also uh bounce just a little bit so that's why you see those ones are bouncing a little bit and then it's gonna go down here uh, on about the third rolling frame off and this was gonna be close because i wanted to roll off slowly so you saw the first one was a little bit distant and the ones that are coming, succeeding, it are going even closer and closer. So which means it's going to go and then we'll roll off slowly uh, to the right. Let me see if I can play what I have now. You can see that. So it bounces and rolls off to the side a little bit. But before it rolls off all the way, it bounces just a tiny bit right there. And then it can roll off. So now my animation is kind of where I want it. So what's going to happen to push it, to push it even further? I'm going to go in it and I'll turn this down a little bit. That This is where now the design of this ball is going to help a little bit. So when it's rolling off, I'm going to make it turn as well. Uh, rotate, not turn, rotate. So that rotation with these colors and the uh, mosaic on the ball will actually help uh, to show a little bit of this motion here and it's not doing a whole 360 it's doing about the first one did about 45 and second one did about uh 90 and then the third one did a, a whole 360 so it can go back where it started i'm not doing a very good job about turning this but you can see you get the idea you see how turning when it's rolling off to the side 
So that's good. I'm satisfying enough. Now what's going to happen, I'm going to go back to where it lands and then I'll do a little bit of squishing and stretching here, especially in the first drop. Uh, so I'm going to go to the uh, frame. Uh, let me see the frame. I need to stretch three to two frames. So what's going to happen, I'm going to go to this one before the ball actually drops all the way on the floor. Uh, and I'm going to squish and stretch it. And then the one before that is going to be just squishing and stretching. You can see I'm squishing and stretching this one a little bit just before the ball lands. And when the ball lands, it's going to squish. I can't say that word. It's going to squish and stretch. But this time it's going to squish and stretch on the horizontal. You see? The other one was squishing and stretching in the vertical because it's falling. But now when it falls, the gravity is still pulling it, so it's going to squish and stretch uh, on the horizontal forward. And now we're going back up. So even the one that is going back up, I want it stretched a little bit. So this one is going to squish and stretch vertically. And you can see now the animation is exactly where I want it. And that's the ball rolling or the ball uh, bouncing and rolling in flipper clip. So flipper clip is mostly for frame by frame animation. Uh, your drawing is what can limit you in this application. Recently, they actually added a lot of other brushes and other tools that you can use to create your animation even more satisfying. Um, to make this look a little bit realistic, I'm going to go ahead and actually draw a little bit of uh, shadow where my ball falls so it's not just landing in free air. I could have just drawn a line uh, so it's falling on the floor, but I'm going to forfeit that. And what I'm going to do is I'll just draw a shadow for it. I'll just create a shadow for it. So when it falls and pops on that shadow, it will look even more realistic that way uh, than when it's just bouncing in uh, free air. So I brought my circle here, or my, uh, what do you call it? And I'm dropping the opacity of the brush a little bit. I'm using the circle tool to draw a couple of ovals down here, where the ball is going to be landing. And now, while the ball is farthest in the air, this is going to be as small as possible, in that when the ball is coming closer to contact, it's going to grow a little bit wider. That's just the laws of light. The closer you are, the bigger your shadow is. And the more far away you are, the more smaller the shadow is. That's just the rules of uh, light. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one a little bit uh, bigger because now the ball is closer to the ground. And each ball is going to have its own shadow. And you can see I'm just copying and pasting. This one at contact is going to be the biggest. But uh, still, I have to squish this a little bit. You just don't want to just stretch it out. Um, and now the ball is going back up. So it's going to be a little bit smaller. And even smaller. And even smaller. Almost disappearing. If you want a more realistic thing here, you can even play with the opacities because the farther it is away, the smaller and it's also the most uh, lit or light or lit it is. And now this one is dropping, so this one has to be a little big, big, big so I'm going to stretch it out, but also squish it vertically. And the ball is going back up, and it's going to start to grow a little bit smaller. Ball is coming back down, it's going to grow a little bit big, and on contact, it's going to have a bigger shadow. And that's it. So now I'm going to start to duplicate and move my shadows. This one uh, pretty much can be the same size. But wait when you see it play with a little bit of uh, um, with a little bit of a shadow on it, you will see what I'm talking about here, why I'm working so hard on this. And you actually don't want the, the shadow to be bouncing in mid-air. So you want the shadow to actually kind of track with the ball. And when the ball lands on the contact, you want the shadow to be there as well. 
So I'm still duplicating my little shadow and my, making sure it's moving with my little ball. And a few more here and we'll be done. You'll be able to see the whole animation. And we'll be able to export our little movie here. So there you go. Now you can see what it looks like when it plays with a little bit of a shadow to it. And you can see when it goes back up and the shadow gets smaller. And when it goes down, the shadow gets bigger. That's how you do a bouncing ball, guys. Thank you so much, so, so, so much for watching, guys. And if you haven't subscribed, please, I beg you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And I have a lot more stuff in store for you guys. We're going to be doing the walk cycle. We're going to be doing the blink cycle. We're going to be doing animations, satisfying animations, all with this free software, Flipper Clip. Even though it has a premium to it, you don't need the premium to be doing these animations. So now what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and save our movie. And please like, share, also comment. The other thing is you can make requests at this point, by the way. Let me know what you guys want me to animate or what you guys want me to talk about. But it all should be flip a clip. And thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, when we're going to be working on our next project, which is going to be the walk cycle. I've already started on it, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. Uh, we're going to go through everything step by step from drawing all the way to animating the whole uh, work cycle. And I know you guys will like and learn with me as we go ahead. If you want, if you guys want, you can draw along so we can have the same project. And I don't care, you can always post it wherever you want to post it for as long as you tag me in it. Thank you so much for watching again.